NBA fans, the wait is over and basketball is back with DraftKings Sportsbook. What better place than to place your bets with the official sportsbook of the NBA, DraftKings? Look, we got the promo going right now. New customers can get $150 instantly for new subscribers. For you to place them bets, all you got to do is throw $5 down, win, lose, or draw. It don't matter because it ain't your money no way. You can get straight to it, do your parlays, single game, multi-game, whatever you want to do. All you have to do is place $5 down, use promo code CLUB520. Look, man, basketball is way more fun when you're in on the action. Make sure you download the DraftKings app so you can get started today. Make sure you use that code, CLUB520. Make sure you use CLUB520 as a promo code only on DraftKings Sportsbook. With the official sportsbook of the NBA, DraftKings. Because the crown is yours. <laughs> All right, we back. Another episode of Club 520 Podcast. I'm the host. My name is DJ Well. Special guest to my left. We're going to introduce my man's laugh. To my far left, we got my dog, B. Hen Bishop, out the prillies. My dog, how you what? Cool and nasty. Let's pod. You know what I'm saying? Check the feast out today. We know how you what today? Yeah, regular schedule program. Let's get to it. Mojo, you, you hit? You hit nah, to the black nah, with the white lights? Just, just nah, finish the show. Nah, I, anytime I see them black forces, I know what time it is. <laughs> He hit somebody upside their head for he came in. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded early too. He woke up on violence. Oh, don't do he that. He got all black with whoa, it too. He whoa. gonna throw the white shoe strings in there to whoa. throw us off. Now nah, we know what time it is. Like like your outfit. You threw us off with that motherfucker uh, thermal under that, under that leather vest. <laughs> no, this ain't no thermal. This is Louis Vuitton. Oh. Oh. This is Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton crew neck. Anyway, I love when like we start off. Yeah, my dog to my right, young Nacho, oh, young Teague. How you uh, what, man? I'm good, bro. I just had these by the door. These my hoop shoes for the day. So you pulling out cool. the bronze now? Yeah. Okay, them are for real. Hey, the South Beach bars. Yeah, but shit. But to my left, we got a special guest in the building, man. Midwest kid, you know what I'm saying? Great comedian. If you have not seen him on Instagram, that means your algorithm is fucking trash. We got the young legend in the making, Mojo. Appreciate you. Come on now, man. I appreciate y'all having me, man. Appreciate Real it, talk. Bro. Appreciate y'all for sure. For sure, man. We love having Midwest guests on, man. You know what I'm saying? It's always love. That why you grew up in Chicago. What side of Chicago did you grow up on? West Side. Okay. Yeah, West Side. The best side. Oh. So yeah. I gotta ask, you know what I'm saying? It's a Chicago disrespect situation going on. You going with Uncle Remus or you going with Harold? Uncle Remus, there's no no Ooh. like no question. It's that easy? Yeah, there's no doubt. Uncle Remus. I'm from the West Side though. Uncle Remus is is a West Side spot, but I've had both. Harold's where people really try to compare it to is is like the sauce, the mouth sauce. Yeah. Harold's got like a the, the mouth sauce no. got like a tang. It's what you like. It got like a tangy sauce to it where Uncle Remus is is like a sweeter, mm -hmm. it's like a sweeter sauce. It just tastes better on the chicken to me. So yeah. I, I fuck with Uncle Remus. I agree too, bro. Yeah. I agree. And, and I actually had Harold's before I ever even had Uncle Remus. So damn, you know, Uncle Remus is is, is definitely where it's at. I mean, this is our resident chef here. You fuck with Uncle Remus heavy like that too? Oh, uh, Uncle Remus all day. Yeah, it's not even Harold's. I already told you how I feel about that. <laughs> the Arby sauce on the wings ain't it? Ain't it? Yeah. yeah. Talking about you said Arby sauce? Yeah, I mean, it ain't. It's it. like a it's like a tangy. It ain't. It's all right. You know what I'm saying? I got to be in the taste. I got to be in the mood like the one Harold's. I got to buy. Well, Harold's got to be like right there, and I'm hungry. I'm like, I get some Harold's, but when I go to Uncle Remus, it's because I want that. Shit. That's what I want. Like yeah. I'm going to get that. For sure. We already started the episode off with a fried question. What was your craziest show up to date so far or your most memorable show? Mm. Most memorable show. Man, I done had some good nights. Uh, like you tell me, you like, you talking about like some crazy shit. Shit, whatever you feel. Like wild shit, crazy shit, good shit. Uh, well, all the shows have been have been great. The, the only show like some wild shit happened was uh, I was in Dayton, Ohio at the Funny Bone. And I probably was about, maybe about 45 minutes into my set, and this, this lady was drunk in the back with her guy. And she didn't like something I, that I said, I guess, and she just, like, stood up and was like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I was like, damn, like, what I do to you? And, like, you know, all the other people in the crowd, like, they paid to see me. They like, no, no, fuck you. Like, so now they with me. And she, I mean, she, I couldn't even understand what she was saying. So my security went and, you know, was trying to talk to her. She still just yelling. I don't even know. She was talking about she had a job and two houses and shit. Like, I don't know. I don't even know what I said that triggered this. I don't even know if it was me. 
Yeah. It might have been her guy. I don't know what it was, but they, but anyways, my security escort her out the out the place. They end up putting them both out. And um, man, like two weeks later, I'm in Detroit getting ready to do a show and I get a phone call. And they like, uh, yeah, um, this is officer such and such uh, from Dayton, Ohio. And, um, you know, we're calling in regards to a situation that we're involving you. Are you a, a, like a celebrity com- comedian or something? So I'm thinking somebody playing on my phone. Yeah. So I was like, man, if you don't get your bitch ass off my <laughs> phone, playing on my phone like this. And I get ready to, you know, hang up. And he was like, no, this is, you know, this is a serious matter. And when I heard his voice, I'm like, all right. I'm like, what, what, what's going on? They was like, well, it was an incident between your security and this lady. And she's saying that he took her and slammed her on her head outside of the comedy club. And they want, you know, she's looking to press charges. You know, we've been trying to get in contact with you. We talked to your agent and, you know, he said he would give us your number, but we, he never got back to it. Shout out to my agent. Yeah, um, but... So they end up catching up with me and, mm-hmm. you know, I had to let them talk to the security or whatever. And they looked at the cameras and, you know, none of that stuff, you know, never had happened. But it was just crazy. Like, people will lie. Like, people Fucks. will just make up shit. You know what I'm saying? Just to, Trying to get a check. To get a check. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm looking at the camera. Oh, yeah. I don't got nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got nothing for you. Not with that Louis on, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't got nothing for you. Nah, I said, no, nah, we got that Louis. We, we gonna figure it out. Yeah, yeah. We need yeah. to double check. I right, can get these. I'll give them these little shoes or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll give them these, but I ain't got nothing for you. So, yeah, that was that was probably like, that was probably like the craziest thing that, you know, probably had ever, you know, happened on the, you know, happened on the, at a show. But other than that, like, you know, I got good, uh, I have like a, I have a really good show. I got, I do, I do about an hour and a half. And, um, it's just a really good show. A lot of crowd work. Um, you know, it's a very interactive show. It's very personable uh, compared to like when I do theaters mm-hmm. and, and stuff yeah. like that. So um, I got one of the best shows out right now. So that, that night, shit. I don't know what happened. And you can see know. the proof, you know what I'm saying? My boy doing double shows in the city here. You yeah, know and shows, man. On Wednesday night. On a Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. I don't care because it's Thanksgiving tomorrow. Like, it's still Wednesday. Yes, oh, yeah. But yeah. It, it hit different niggas who ain't going to work tomorrow. Yeah, it do. It help a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking but, yeah. of help, I got to ask, do hecklers help your show? Do hecklers help my Because I see like a lot of times like comedians are leaning to that. Like a, a heckler show is just like, oh, I've been waiting for this. Like oh, fuck yeah. this whole set. I got well, 30 depends, minutes for you. It depends on who the comic is. A lot mm. of comedians, if if you a comic that like you off the top and and, and, and you can rock with the crowd. That's why I said I, I do a lot of crowd work. So my show is very personable. So mm-hmm. yeah, you know, for me, you know, a heckler can give me something and I can ride that shit for the rest of the night. And I just keep calling them back and keep calling. Right when you think I forgot about it, I come right back to it. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, yeah, I I mm-hmm. I, I, I appreciate a good heckler. Now, the hecklers you don't like is the ones that don't give up. Yeah, yeah they just keep talking. <laughs> they just keep like you done already killed them. Everybody done laughed, and now you can't you you can't move over to the show. And at that point. It's not fair to the other people that pay money yeah, to, to see yeah. the show. So, <laughs> you know, it's fun within it. Like, get it out. You're going to yell out something, yell it out, get it out. But you fucking up the vibe. Yeah, yeah. don't fuck up the vibe. And it's like for vibe. you, like, when they be having people course out, it's like a couple back and forth is cool. But it's like, all right, now, nigga, shut up. Yeah, pretty much. But, you don't be saying nothing back to people, though, do you? Nah. Yeah. I, nah I used to. It depends who it was. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and say it. Yeah. I, I wasn't going to bring I it call, up. I called a dream a fat nigga. Uh, something like that. Don't worry about <laughs> that shit. Yeah, I was shit your fat ass up, something like that. But no, what do you say to you, bro? I don't remember. What did he tell me? Pass the ball, pass the ball. Shit your fat fat ass up. (laughs) That nigga was chubby back then. Fuck that. But I was gonna ask you, like, did you start off doing comedy on the internet, or like, was you grinding in in the comedy clubs and stuff like that? Um, so I started doing like skits in like 2014, Mm -hmm. and then you know I was growing like fast, and I was like, man, you know. This is not gonna make sense. Like if I blow on this and being like, they be like, "Hey, we want you to come do a show," yeah. and then I can't deliver in that aspect. Mm, yeah, it's gonna hurt you. Um, so I I probably start. I started May two thousand fourteen. By October two thousand fourteen, I was getting on stage. Right. So it kind of I was running it simultaneously at that point. So that way, I'm like, when I blow, I'm gonna be ready. Yeah. That's real. So and I'm ready. Who you look up to, like, before you started actually taking it serious? Who kind of gave you some inspiration to start 
doing that shit for real. Man, I I'm gonna say this. What you what you supposed to do, like when you destined for it, it'll happen, it'll come to you at a time in your life that you're not even really paying no attention to it. Like that, this is what you're gonna be. In fifth grade, I should have knew I was gonna be a comedian. And I say that because we went on spring break, and that's when uh, the Kings of Comedy came out. Yeah. And we everybody was on spring break and we watched we watched it and <clears> came <throat> back to school. And I'm reciting Bernie Mac's whole set to the classroom. Go. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 sad for sad. People they're not even laughing like they my jokes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I'm just saying, cause a lot of people, you know, a lot of kids I was going to school with, their parents ain't let them watch that. Hell yeah. no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So I had seen it and I had a love for it then. I had a you know a infatuation with it then. And mm-hmm. I wanted, you know, and I used to always watch comic view and stuff like that, but not one time of me ever watching this or ever, you know, reciting the jokes or nothing did I ever be like. Man, I'm gonna be a comedian one day. Not, yeah. not never. So, um, when like when it when it started like to really grow on me, um, I was watching like a lot of Kevin Hart, a lot of Cat Williams. Like you know that first special that Cat Williams uh, came man. out with. <laughs> That's the best shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That Elite. Shit. A lot of quotables from that. Wow. Um, we man. talk about the Tyler Perry DVD run, but the bootleg Cat Williams stand ups, bro, hit crazy in our community, bro. Yeah. bro. Crazy. Said, bro. said that chick had on the baby had on soccer shoes. Yeah. <laughs> in a dress, bro. That yeah. Took me Feet out, dragging bro. across the floor. <laughs> I in thought the about my wife the whole time. That <laughs> shit was crazy. <laughs> Shout out to the lineage. <laughs> <laughs> she used to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. They got they got it cracking though. Yeah. Like the Spanish community, like they started a sneaker ball. Like, they started <laughs> they, a sneaker ball they swag. They did low key. <laughs> I never did. thought about that. They started a sneaker ball swag, bro. Cause they always had the dresses with the sneaks. Bro. The Adidas Sambas yeah. and the flyer dress. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In a white sure. sock. Oh, yeah. yeah. In a white sock. Yeah. With the white sock. With the <laughs> Yeah. Damn, shout out to the gang, man. Yeah, man. We gotta Thank go. you to the Mexican community, the Hispanic community out there. We, we appreciate, appreciate y'all. y'all. Oh, we didn't know that they had a contribution to the fashion world, but we got to show that respect. Oh, yeah, got to. Yeah, now them George y'all be wearing. <laughs> Did you ever have a pair? What? But, uh, La Haciendas. <laughs> No, you know, it was a time where <coughs> it was cool to wear them Jordans. Now, niggas used to hoop. Some Team Jordans ain't yeah. that bad, bro. I, bro. I, I had Eddie Jones? When the six rings, when them six rings first came out. No, Mojo, you was out of pocket. <laughs> you I had them six rings. We I had them too, now. but we was I out of pocket. It. We was know. now we know we yeah. was out of pocket, but we didn't know then. I'll tell you what was crazy, too. I had them fusions, too. I was <laughs> getting <laughs> the fusions. <laughs> you were on with jeans? The fusions? Yeah. What else are you supposed to wear on with? <laughs> Nigga, basketball, shoot a layup in the motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> they were the ones that was like forces though. <laughs> yeah, 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 they were like mad black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Look, the that twelve fusions, the twelve fusions. Everybody had those. That was hard. Them coochie fives, them. Um, I fusion had. fives. Then was an expo classic. Yeah, I, I, had had the, I had the Eddie Jordans. I had the goddamn the Eddie Jones. Spike Lee, the Spike Eddie Lee's Jones was cold. I mean. Eddie Jones. Uh, Eddie Jones. The Spitz likes. The Spike Lee's was cold. Spitz likes were too bad. The Spitz likes still kind of. They still kind of hit it. I can still get a. Yeah, wild. Matter of fact, I'm wearing Spitz. You can't go from the. I would go no. I wouldn't let y'all see me in them. <laughs> you gonna see me the gas? I take my daughter to Chuck E. Cheese in them or something like that. Respect, respect. Yeah, but I ain't gonna. You just... too big now, nigga. Pause. Like Man, you, you take right. her, you take her to Chuck E. Cheese. They, 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 they gonna flick your ass up in <laughs> the let, hell. Let me tell you something. I took her to Chuck E. Cheese one day, and it was it was a birthday party in there, and it was a hood birthday party in there. Yeah, you, you know how them hood birthday parties be like. Everybody don't come inside to Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. <laughs> like most the niggas be outside smoking and shit like that. These right. niggas out, they hitting a the blunt. Me and my daughter at the thing where you roll the ball in, they got to go in the little ski ball. We playing that, man. Them niggas all day in the window and shit, just, just, just staying the whole time. So I'm at this point, I'm nervous because it's just me and her in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I uh <laughs> So I was like, come on, we gonna uh <laughs> we gonna get up out of here. And she was like, Daddy, we just got here and I ain't get to get my prize. I'm like, baby, look. I will take you to the store right, right now, now and buy you whatever toy you want. Yeah. This shit in here, it ain't it ain't even worth us standing right here waiting. Like these people already know I'm up in here. And it just and the the thing is, like when it be guys and you see them, and we this all over the place, but when it be guys seeing them, seeing me, and like they be, and I just said something about this yesterday, like they don't know how this look. Like it'll be three of them, and you know, I look over and the nigga be. <laughs> like what? Like nigga, what? Like what you tapping him for? Like 
Say what you like. Say what's up. Like, cause I, no, it's issue, like what's going on? Because <laughs> I can't read your temperature. I can't right read now. it. I don't know yeah. what's happening. Like, do I need to get ready or what? Like, what's happening? That's a fact. So it gets. <laughs> Bro, it just be like, all right, damn. Did I, I know you gotta, him You got to keep nasty with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Even on the Chuck E. Cheese. No, nah, man, no. Nah, we got to slide. Yeah, that's, how, nah, that's how we been now. That's how, man. That's how we been now, man. I don't even go to the grocery <laughs> store, man. I don't even go to the grocery <laughs> store. That's crazy. Hey, what's funny? You said Chuck E. Cheese because black people treat Chuck E. Cheese like the club for kids. Yeah, They be yeah. having sections in that motherfucking area at their kids' birthday party. And it then is, you bro. know what? You know they got the new thing now. But like they, It's called a Chucky moment where... Chucky come out, mm-hmm. they play some music and the kids, they like, they like dancing in front of Chucky and he he dropping tickets and shit on them, man. Hey, Chucky right now. I'm gonna kill him on his ass. Ch- my boy, my, I had Chucky. to give my daughter back it up. <laughs> nah. Chucky yeah. making it rain on him. Yeah. Oh, Chucky. Kids? Oh, oh, my that's... mama, Chucky. Nah. Chucky threw about 2,500 <laughs> tickets on my daughter's head, man. Damn. She scrambling on the floor. I'm like, man, get your <laughs> ass up. <laughs> Damn, yeah, Chucky getting them crackers early. Man, he out of pocket. That don't happen in Indianapolis. 25 tickets on the head, That don't happen in Indianapolis. That's a Chicago Chucky cheese. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's damn crazy. Near, I damn near almost sued him. <laughs> back, I damn nah, you could have, bro. Because that's, that's out of pocket. Yeah, that's a wild footage. Man, I told you, I met a stripper over there. She was 56. Her name was Sweetie Diabetes. <laughs> She just be on the pole in the middle out of nowhere, taking her little insulin, just popping in her stuff. Like, you ain't gonna go to the back and do that? <laughs> Shout out to my cousin. He got a pager on his hip, too. Uh, a pager? Yo, yo, what's wrong with them? The two niggas ain't right, man. They ain't right, man. <laughs> Got that nigga Power Rangers That motherfucker activate him Power Rangers crazy Man Get that morphine yeah. Man look. That motherfucker diabetes ain't no hoe That man. motherfucker take your foot off Boy, Sugar you sugar careful. You gotta be careful Hey man Damn. Speaking of that You know what I'm saying We real close to the holidays Thanksgiving to be exact What's the most important Thanksgiving side Chef Start us off Ah uh, shit, mine for real. Y'all gonna think I'm out of pocket, bro? But I fuck with deviled eggs on on Thanksgiving. That's no, the most important. We ain't surprised by that nigga. You in here with some all black? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bojo, we can go there. Hold on, now. All right, I'm about to get That's the, the most back. important side. <laughs> the, 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 to me, the I'm talking about to me now respect, for, respect. for for the family. Yeah, somebody got to make sure that macaroni is together. Okay, yeah. and for the family, we gonna choose the macaroni. For more, macaroni week, you gotta go out the gate. Yeah, Mojo. I got I, I I rock with the dressing. The dressing. Yeah, I was gonna say right. dressing. Yeah, you gotta have dressing, not stuffing. Niggas dressing, having stuffing, no. I'm not sliding. Yeah, you gotta I was gonna have say dressing. Dressing, dressing gotta be on. Right. Dressing might be the most important. I don't even like it, but it's definitely the most important. Oh, you damn. don't like it? Nah, I don't like dressing. I don't like yeah, that I don't shit. eat that shit either, That shit ain't good Damn, niggas don't fuck with dressing That crazy. shit tastes like Flavor sand <laughs> No You gotta mix <laughs> Damn, it Damn, not the Stone top That's a hell of a comparison sweet, like, <laughs> Mix it with your sweet potatoes no and see how you feel. Just do it Do it tomorrow Mix that shit with some sweet potatoes Eat a little dressing Sweet potatoes Together I'm gonna try it Try it Hold on, I'm gonna try it I fuck with the ends of mac and cheese That's that That's that I combo. can't do the mac and cheese though You don't fuck with mac and cheese? I'm lactose I don't, I don't fuck with mac and cheese either, though. See, my guy. Damn, nah, for real? Nah, it, yeah. I'm you like, ain't lactose, though. You just don't. Nah, I just don't. Nah, it just ain't it going It's just something me. about yeah. it. Them noodles. I don't know. Damn. Nah, Damn, I ain't can't eat no ice cream, no nothing. No, nah, I get the, the lactate ice cream. The almond milk ice cream. Nigga, that weak ass <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, lactate milk is trash as hell. Trash. That shit tastes like almond joy. <laughs> Man, it tastes. that shit tastes the same to me. Cause you got to get used to it, bro. No, I didn't have to. I, I transitioned right when I knew that the lactate was fucking. <laughs> you didn't have no choice. Yeah, yeah. I trans- It don't taste bad. I, man, that I'll shit still make my cream, stomach man. hurt for some reason. <laughs> Do it. It might be a mental thing. I get lactate milk too. That shit still make my stomach hurt. Y'all act like I'm making that shit like it's easy, man. Cause we're just shaking it up. It's already yeah. where to go. What? The lactate milk is just in a, in a can, ain't no container. Oh, uh, in the car, my yeah, God. car. Yeah, yeah. No, they get they get them together. They got the look for sure. The presentation yeah. is there. The shit is good, man. It ain't. <laughs> I mean, milk. When the fuck has milk ever just tasted good though? Like who the fuck just waking up? Let me get a glass of milk. I'm thirsty. Hey, Nobody, n- nigga. You said you did the whole motherfucker Bernie Mac. When he did Keys of Comedy. I ain't yeah. say I milk drank the milk, what, though. Milk and cookies. cookies, but I, I ain't. But well, you couldn't, you, motherfucker. But you, you can't. Couldn't. But you can't just drink milk without the cookie. Yeah, niggas is just drinking the cookie, milk for GP. The cookie give it the whole situation yeah. some flavor. But if you just drinking milk just for GP, you out of pocket. Yeah. Yeah, you sick. So, nigga, you, you, you eat, drinking you that would... lactate just for GP is out of pocket. I would never just drink the lactate, <laughs> though. I would drink the lactate with some cookies. Yeah, I feel that. All right, All right. respect. 
What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> you, see, you see the feet? <laughs> I see what we do with. He's aggressive, man. <laughs> 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 hey man. Oh man, so I gotta ask you. Um, if there's any person or any group of people you could go on tour with, say pick three comics, who would it be? Three comics I go on tour with? Uh they alive or they dead? Chill, it don't matter. Your choice. I would go on tour with uh I would go on tour with Kevin Hart. And Bernie Mac, I would, I would like, love to see what what it would have been like. Hey, been Bernie like. Mac shows one of the best TV shows ever. Yeah, it yeah, was underrated. It's one of the fireest TV shows, bro. Shows definitely underrated. They would have tried to cancel my nigga these days. Oh, uh, he wouldn't have made it. He wouldn't have made <laughs> I it. I think he, he would have to be wild. Hell nah, bro. You know what? No, because I was gonna say with well, Corey Holcomb making it, but Corey Holcomb is is still different than what the mm-hmm. shit that Bernie. Bernie, Bernie Mac used to be saying. The sissies in the church, bro, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. He called his nephew a Yeah, yeah bro. bro. You, you, if you say the word today, bro, yeah. you are cooked. Yeah. It's over with. It, you are cooked. Yeah, he was Santana calling up. in the morning. <laughs> 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 Lil Nas X is, is, is on your phone in the morning. Like, hey. That's a sick-ass caller ID. <laughs> Man. That's a sick-ass backcourt. <laughs> Saucy X. <eggs. laughs> the, the real splash rose. <laughs> The real slash bro, <laughs> sick ass back court. Wow, 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 bro. Extendos <laughs> earlier. That's crazy. Extendos that was insane. That one, yeah, that was nuts. You gotta get on Patreon. I'm still kind of shitty Extendos he said that. <laughs> That's insane. I know, nigga. You tapped into it? Yeah, I tapped into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, damn. That's a well-known fact that I'm a Bears fan, though. I, feel I was sorry all over you. ESPN. Oh, I saw. I just wanted to see uh, how, where, where you was leaning towards. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that, by the way. Yeah, yeah sorry. I hate that for you. We're going to be okay. Free Justin Fields. So you yeah. lean more towards the football guy, I feel for him. Huh? or basketball? You more of a football head or basketball? Uh, I'm heavy in, in, in football. I okay. like basketball. Basketball just not interesting to me until the playoffs. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I be feeling like, nigga, 82 games. That's a lot of motherfucking games, bro. Hell of games. That's a lot of games. <laughs> you know, y'all season is long. Like they, yeah. y'all used to play all year. Yeah, hell of yeah. games, bro. Don't nobody pay attention to them shits till the end. But, to the end, yeah. till when it count, like man, we need this game to get a playoff spot or like that's when it matter. That's yeah. when that shit be intense. The yeah. end season playoff shit been cracking though. We nah, all hey. shitted on it. But them end season playoff games been cracking. Nah, I didn't nah. know they was doing that. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. At the end though, right? No, nah, they right doing now. it now. They doing it in they between. They doing the like season. little t- tournaments. Yeah. And shit, and I heard about that. Yeah, everybody is in the center. Million dollars, five hundred k million. Get yeah, yeah. Here. We're gonna get a million. Believe. But yeah. I believe it's five hundred k for everybody. But shit, them games been crazy. Yeah. And I think that if they keep incentivizing that, it's going to keep being it. Well, it's going to keep things interesting then. Well, that, yeah. that's, well, that goes to what we was just saying, then. Yeah. Yeah. 82 games and, and shit. That's a long-ass season. That's a long season. Long it shit. ain't it, Baseball, it, there was no reason why they should play that many games in baseball. <laughs> That's a hundred. They be having double headers. That yeah. shit's crazy. They play two and one day. That's and crazy. back to back though. Like, yeah. All right, this game in. We are now, running back. One thing I will say though, baseball is so. It used to be so slow, but they they just sped it up now because yeah. they didn't put count. like a, a pitch a pitch clock on there. Because mm-hmm. I, I threw out the first pitch at the Cubs game, man, and I was like, man, I don't think I'm be able to stay to the ninth. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no end time. And, and, yeah, you don't know. You don't yeah. know. And then like. I'm looking out. My dad was like, "Yeah, they got the clock," and I'm looking. I'm like, "Oh, it is moving a little faster now." So, yeah, baseball, baseball is cool. I would go football, basketball, and then baseball. And basketball, you know, I, I'm a Chicago guy, so I'm a I'm a Bulls fan. And um, you know, we just nah, shout out to the Bulls. But are you a Cubs yeah. fan or a White Sox fan? <laughs> The Cubs let me throw out the first pitch. Uh, so, because uh, most people be fucking with the White Sox. No, I'm a people. Cubs. Uh, but yeah. even before that, like, I'm a Chicago fan. If the White Sox are in it, I'm a root for the White Sox. If I dig it. If the White Sox and the Cubs are in it, if they is, it's both of them, I, I'm going for the Cubs. I'm a Cubs fan. And I think it's kind of like the Cubs and the Bears are kind of like. Oh, okay. Yeah. They kind of like tied into each other. Like the yeah. Bears used to play at Wrigley Field. Yeah. yeah. So they got, there is connection there. So I, um, maybe it's that. Shout out to Sammy Sosa. Which one? <laughs> Both. 
We can shout the white one out. Shout the white one out. He was cold too, though. The white Sammy? The white Sammy was cold too. The white Sammy never played. He, yeah. he, nah, he, started oh, he played. Tra- yeah, he did. Not on the field. He started transitioning early, though. So he chill. You say he transitioned to what? <laughs> yeah, we can move on. <laughs> Y'all not about to get me tied up. Never mind. Yeah, Sammy, <laughs> what, I, I wasn't, what I was saying... What I was saying, Sammy, you wasn't playing baseball when you was white. (laughs) That's all I'm saying, bro. I ain't fucking with it. Never mind. I fuck with you, though. (laughs) Sammy was damn near looking like, oh boy, they played Michael Jackson, though. Uh, Oh, my God. Flex. (laughs) Flex. Oh, my God. They didn't even use makeup. They just used the lactate milk and put it on his face. (laughs) (laughs) But the thing with Sammy is, it's like, he just popped up like what nobody gonna notice. Like, he just popped up the next day, like, bro. Yeah, Sammy. Sammy got in there, and got out of there. Though. Yeah. You don't even see him no more. You see Sammy no more. Sammy back on the island, chilling. What's Sammy funny well, is he, he popped up when he was in the transition for us, and he was, you know, what I'm saying he was still a little bit of like unused hot cocoa mix. And then yeah. next time we seen that nigga, he was all <laughs> Caucasian. I and it was confirmed damn. that he did bleach his skin, though, right? Yeah, yeah. confirmed. Yeah, yeah bro. But allegedly, just in case we don't get sued. It's yeah. allegedly. Yeah, no, it's confirmed, yeah. but allegedly, just in case we get sued. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he is I hate that fucking word It's confirmed It's confirmed okay. Mike tapped in So there's nothing wrong With us saying that dude. Oh no He believes Charlemagne who Oh look but He ain't that lighter though He ain't like Sammy We don't care about that Nah Sammy It's the said. big noticeable change I'm gonna be Mark McGuire God damn it <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, somewhere. For real. But I mean, a lot of people do it. Y'all know the girls now, they doing it. They they bleaching their booty hole. Shout out to Kanye. Yeah. Kanye started that? Nah, he said it in a song. That's crazy. Oh. Man, no, God. I'm just Kanye started Because, hey, most of y'all this Chicago niggas, y'all pocket. some crazy trends. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yeah, yeah, had a lot of wild Say, niggas yeah, out the shop. Yeah, he started that as well. <laughs> Whoa, 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 Nigga, you whoa. said it, nigga. Whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on Headline Mojo says. Hold on. No, y'all said that. Listen. <laughs> no, you said that. You what, said what you ain't got to crack it. What, what, what wild niggas from Chicago? The Chocolate Factory? The Palm Piper and R&B? That's different. <laughs> I was about to say, nigga, we can go crazy, but since we're here. Nah, but who is the, who, outside, of course, yay. Who is, like, the hardest artist to come out of? You know what I mean? Or one of your favorites? So far as rappers, like, out of Chicago to you. My favorite right now, and it's only because, not it's not only because we work together, but working together uh, just gave me a, a different level of respect for his artistry and, and, and who he is, but Lil Durk. Oh, Durk. for sure. Yeah, yeah Lil Durk. Durk come up as far because when you seen uh, the movement with Chief, he really got cracking. He was always around. Mm-hmm. And like, he played his position, but still did his work. And then he transitioned. Like, he 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 he's, he was able to transition <clears throat> into a mainstream artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, he... Durk a star, bro. Like, Nah, for sure. I, I ain't gonna, like... And I told him when we linked up, you know, I didn't even realize he had gotten... That big, like you know, I knew he was big in Chicago. I I had no idea, but he had did a show at the United Center in Chicago, and I mean, he was the headline. And I was like, I'm like, bro, this is, cra-. I'm, I'm I'm like, this is crazy. And then you know, after that, Dirk really was what transitioned me into the toxic skits that I started doing. Yeah. So that's how we end up coming together because I the first video that I ever did at that ring camera was about Dirk. Proposing to India because I was at the I was at the show that night uh, when he proposed and that night I said you know what I'm finna play off of this because I know it's gonna be on the shade room mm-hmm. five minutes later after he proposed it was on the shade room and then I went home the next day did a ring camera bought this big fake ring that was like seven dollars and left the price tag on there and I'm at the ring camera like man you see Dirk just proposed to India like you know I'm trying to make it right with us like up? I'm trying to and after that it just you know that took off and then. You know, Dirk came earlier this year, about April, and DM me, like, out of nowhere. I didn't even know it was him. And was like, hey, I need you for this video. And I just thought it was somebody else because it's around the time they started giving everybody the blue checks. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm like, I mean, I'll go back and look at this. This is some rapper just, you know. Yeah. This shit ain't even, he ain't paying got no money or nothing. Like, I, I, this is how I'm, like, and someone was like, go back and look at it. So I went back and looked at it, and it was like, it said, like, The Voice 2.0. And then I clicked, and I'm like, <laughs> the voice. And he had like, like 17 million followers. I'm like, damn, it's Dirk. Yeah, that's him. I wrote him back. I'm like, what do you need me to get there? Like, what you, <laughs> <laughs> what you need? And he was like, man, what's your line now? Gave my line, and we talked. He let me know what it was he wanted to do. They, they sent me the song. 
then he ended up flying me out to LA and 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 we did the video and and the, I mean the video was the collab was legendary for Chicago, but it, the video was dope. And just watching him work, like watching him get on, you know, get on set and you know, I'm I mean knocking that shit out. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I'm listening to the people that's filming and they like, you know, Dirk one of our favorite artists to work with because we don't gotta tell him what to do. He comes in, you know, and I just did not <clears throat> I just did not expect that. I think a lot of times, a lot of the drill rappers are the, you just don't, you just don't see it as, okay. Business. This is a real entertainer. Like yeah. this is, this is real skill. Like, no, he, he he's really like, he's really talented. And like, to piggyback on that, like, obviously with you being a comedian, but people don't understand, like, even people who just do skits and don't do comedy, comedy, excuse me, that is a skill. That is not yeah. easy to do. You have to be calculated. You have to know your algorithms. You have yeah. to know, when to post this, how to post this, who is going to hit, how to capitalize off that. Like, that is a skill. Yeah, no. And it, it, and Just because you make it look easy don't mean I ain't working. Man, I tell people all the time, like, you know, I posted a video yesterday. It's probably just hit a, it posted up about yesterday, maybe about 2, 3 o'clock. Before I got here, it was at like 900,000 views. Talk your shit. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it was very, like, the way I put it together was very calculated, you know. And it's little stuff that I put in there, like, and I'm gonna do this. See, the key to it is you want always want to get people to comment. People think it's always about the likes. Don't mean shit. Likes don't mean nothing. Yeah. Comments and to, shares. You need the comments and you need the shares. What the comments do, the when they comment and the engagement is there and there's people in there talking, mm -hmm. the algorithm reads that and says, okay, people like this because there's a lot of people talking about it. Let's push it out more. Yep. When people share it, they sharing it to to their audience, of, of people that may not be following you. And now, you know, these people are seeing it. And now what they going to do? They going to click on it. And now they going to go comment. Mm -hmm. And that was driving the engagement. You know, it's driving engagement up. So, um, no, it is. It is a calculated thing. And it's, and it's, it's nothing out here that's going to teach you how to do it. Nope. You know what I'm saying? And I came in the social there. media area like, like I was kind of like maybe in that second or third tier, maybe maybe third, fourth tier of you know internet sensations that that started to blow. And it's so you got to self teach yourself that stuff. Like Instagram had when I was doing videos, Instagram videos used to be ten seconds long. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds long. You had to tell a story in ten seconds. Yeah, Vine remember was six that time. seconds. Yeah. R.I.P. to Vine. Vine was... It was early. Vine was six seconds. Vine was so far. Like, obviously, Vine... Vine is like what is... TikTok is on what, what TikTok is now, but it's just longer. You could just make longer mm -hmm. content, but six seconds is all you had. Ten seconds is what you had on Instagram, and it started to grow and grow and grow, but... To go through those transitions and and, and see it like you had to self teach. It was nobody out here teaching you like about algorithms mm -hmm. and, and teaching you about you know how to create content and what to be looking for. Like I never thought the comment. I used to be cool with fifteen hundred likes and a hundred comments. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. People liking it. That was, but people liking it is cool. You know what I'm saying? You want that. You want it because it look good. But it don't get you paid. But it ain't going to get you paid. When you pull up in the meetings and you have no sponsorship opportunities, you don't see a like and none of that paperwork. They go to the comments, comments engagement. The engagement. Wow. When any meetings I've sat in, they always say, bro, your engagement, the engagement, the comments are, are crazy. It's just so many people talking in there. And I say stuff purposely, you know, to... Like, for example, I did the promo video for the show out here, and I said I had an Airbnb in Hallville. Shout out to the Ville. <laughs> okay. Oh, nigga, I hope that ain't true. I absolutely... <laughs> but but you, here's the thing, though. You know it ain't true. Because one, why would I tell people where I'm going to be staying yeah. at? And yeah. then two, go back to calculator, right? I knew I had to... I, I And I do this every city that I go to. I got to... I have to relate to them somehow. Yeah, they know who I am. I could post a flyer and say, pull up. But my goal is to sell out as many shows as I can. Yeah. Like, like so if they see a five, like, listen, Naptown messed with me so hard, I hadn't even posted about the show until Sunday. And the first show was already almost sold out. It was only like 20 tickets left to that first show. Yeah. I posted a promo to get the second show going. Now, I got the information that I needed. You know what I'm saying? You just find somebody. Hey, 
tell me a little bit about the city. Like, man, where the hood at? Like, where where's rough at? Mm-hmm. And then they, you know, they tell you like that. Oh yeah, you should, you know, this place, that place, you know, or you know, this side of town or that side of town. And what happens is, as soon as I say, man, I got an Airbnb in Hallville. Bing. What happened? Now they in the comments. Oh, you can't stay over there. Yeah, now I they take, look where he say he's staying at. <laughs> yeah. And now they tagging and they sharing. They all he don't know about the veal. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Now they now you, now you getting all of that. Tapped in with the I, community. Tapped in with the community because now they like, even if they know it ain't real, they like. Oh, he did his research. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they, they appreciate that. that. You give a they fuck enough to know us. You you care enough to know where we from, where where we coming from to, to even come and see you. Like you care enough to know that. Bro, I, some cities I done went to where they told me don't, you know. I went to Cleveland and went to the hood and stood on the corner and was like, y'all, did the Airbnb I'm supposed to get supposed to be right here and ain't right here? You know what I'm saying? And I got the, the street sound right behind me. Yeah, that's hard. A million yeah. views. Six well, sold out shows. Damn, uh, in Cleveland? 1,800 tickets. Uh, nigga, that's great marketing. It's crazy since I started doing the videos how many... My my following used to be like eighty percent women, twenty percent men, yeah. and now it's like sixty percent women, fifty, you know, sixty forty. Now it's like yeah, it's like sixty forty. Like the my male following is just like definitely just like then jumped up, and, and, and it's crazy because I never, I never expected it, and and I think it, it it that got a lot to do with the increased ticket sales because it ain't just women making a man come out to see me now. Now it's like, shit, the guy's like, shit, I want to go see this nigga too because he yeah. be talking some shit like. And that's fire. Because yeah. I see it, they treat your shit like Justin LeBoy shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's toxic, bro. Oh, it's yeah, toxic. Yeah. A bitch, bro. It's toxic. But this whole generation below us is all toxic. That's all they know. That's all they know. That's all they know. I know, but some of that shit is, you know, coming from the crib too, bro. But, yeah, it happens at the yeah, house. A lot of niggas like crib, Future, bro. man. Nah, he's the GOAT. See? A lot of people like Future. A lot of people don't like Russell. Russell ain't did nothing to nobody. <laughs> ain't did nothing. Nothing. His Russell teammates Russell don't fuck with No, I don't fuck with that. That's wrong. Nope. What? Russell out of pocket. His teammates don't fuck with him. He said, y'all can't call me. I saw the work. Nah, bro. This niggas I work with, I don't want to talk to. Bro, at all. we're not going to take up for Russell Wilson. I'm not. I'm just saying, Russell ain't did nothing wrong as far as stepping in that woman's life and, and being a good stepfather. And, and, you know. Shout out to him taking care of his family, being a good family man. Yeah. I'm talking about outside of the career, bro. People don't fuck with him like that. I don't know what he do outside of oh, Okay. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, he's a piece of shit outside the yeah. career. Yeah. I believe it. He ain't worth a quarter. What's the name? Marshawn Lynch said, Marshawn Lynch was did a podcast and he was saying, like, that Russ was like that. I just don't, I don't, you know. He was calling him on private. He said, Y'all just giving him the benefit of the doubt because he a gump. And it's understood. It's understood. He got a come over, bro. I ain't mad at a nigga who got a come over, bro. I mean, whatever. I ain't going to call him a gump or nothing like that. Russ, I don't know what you be doing outside the house. This man right here in the Black Air Force Ones, if you see him, your ass better go the other way. I'm just saying, my nigga. <laughs> Your ass better head that way, my boy. You see the white laces dangling? My boy, you see them white... Hey, hey, what do you say? Broncos County, let's ride. <laughs> see, that's why he got me fucked up. Last year, when he was getting that ass whooped, and he was going to that press conference, Broncos Country, nigga, I would slap the shit but out of you. We were always sick. He low-key been balling this year, though. Yeah, because they did so bad last year that 500 looks great this year. They've been decent for no, sure. No, they over 500 no, now. Yeah, they, been, they are. They've been going crazy in the division, yeah. but they division a little. Yeah, but still, Russ. They division, man, the Chiefs in that division. Yeah, and who else outside of that? Uh, The Chargers. The Chargers not bad, bro. Oh, they're poop. They're yeah, competitive. They, they're about weak to, this year. They're about to fire their head coach. Yeah, but they competitive, though. Free Justin Herbert. Free him. <laughs> Free him. Free, Free that man. Justin Herbert. Free Justin Fields, too. Man, that's my guy, y'all. He deserved better. Respect yeah. to y'all, Sam. He deserved better. No, he, uh, man, just, you know, I was at the game in Detroit and just, I mean, he just got all the tools, man. Physically gifted, talented. He's smart. You know what I'm saying? I just think that, uh, you know. Bad organization. Yeah, Some I change. can't say that. You know, nah, you know, nah, we don't say it for you. You know, me you. and the Bears cool. You know, yeah, what we tapped in. We gonna respect the content. Yeah. Yeah. But what I will say is that, um, you know, I think it's some. I think it's some things that could be done to like to help. Like the dude could really be a star in the league. You know, under under some you know some some good circumstances. Like, not that the circumstances are bad, <laughs> but I feel like if the team was, um, you know, was was playing to his like his strengths. 
kind of like what we seen in Detroit Sunday. Like mm-hmm. they 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 played to the strength, they moved him around, he made some throws, he made some runs. Just at the end of the game, I just felt like they took the ball out of his hands. And that ain't right. And and and, and the only way that I feel like you'll ever know. If a guy is the guy, give him the moment. The ball. You have to put the ball in his hand again. Yep. Him. And they took yeah. the ball out of his hand, and and that's what was hard to watch. But I talked to him before the game, and um, he was locked in. Oh yeah, he was locked in. He's really focused, calculated. Man, you just, you know, he just need he just need the right the the right situation. Of. And I wonder what they'll do because obviously. Y'all gonna probably get the number one pick because the Panthers are completely ass. Yeah. So then it's like, now you pass this year having number one pick and you traded it away. You gotta get Caleb Williams. I don't think so. I feel like I don't. I here's the thing about that is that you can't pass up on him. You can't. I feel like Justin is better right now, and he probably will be the first couple of years. Yeah. But as a general manager, that buys you Caleb, four more years. Let's say this first of all, Caleb ain't ain't just been crushing it this year. Oh, Caleb, he's one. He's the one. But Caleb been having a couple. To Mojo's he, point, he been he, having a lot of he's, bad games. A lot too. of he's had a lot of bad games this year. And looking at him and Justin, right? Here's the thing. This is what happens. You bring in a rookie quarterback. Now mm-hmm. you set the you setting the clock back on the, sure. on the whole on the entire rebuild. There's no guarantee that any rookie quarterback is just gonna come in and be absolutely Bryce Young. No, yeah. is it CJ CJ Stroud. Stroud yeah. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that C.J. Stroud is going to be the same quarterback next year when teams start to adjust yeah. to figure yeah, out yeah. what it is that he does well. So if you if you're really rebuilding this team from the from from the ground up, which they did, they stripped the whole team down. They traded away a lot of players, Roquan Smith and Khalil Mack, and and all those guys. When you do that, and then you turn around and you draft another quarterback when the team has other major needs, needs. Yeah, yeah, you're not. You're not building the team. No, I agree. Like, you just because now you're just getting one. a rookie quarterback. You're doing the infrastructure again. But you're getting a rookie. Qu- you're getting a rookie quarterback, and you're gonna throw him into the same situation yep. that Justin Fields is in. So how is the team? You're not building. It's gonna be the same thing. So yeah. and then in three years, they're gonna be like, yeah, Kayla Williams, not it. It's a dud. He gotta go. Yeah. When I you agree, know bro. you got a guy. Anybody, listen. I was sitting in the stands, and I'm listening to the Detroit Lion fans. Sam, man, this guy's good. They, listen. When you know, listen, I got other friends in the NFL that play on other teams. My homeboy played for the Philadelphia Eagles. And when they played them last year, I asked them. I asked them three years ago when Mitch Trubisky was our quarterback, and I asked him, I say, hey, is Mitch the guy? And he was like, no. Nah. They was like, we knew all week what, you know, how we could stop him. Well, I, when they played Justin Fields, I asked him, I said, man, we got a quarterback now? He say, bro, y'all got a good-ass quarterback. For sure. This is a highly regarded mm-hmm. defensive player in the NFL that, that I'm saying that's saying this. So my thing is, what I would do with those picks, the offensive line needs to get shored up. For mm-hmm. sure. We need some defensive line help. Um, a, a wide receiver would help. And a wide receiver. So I say get Marvin Harrison Jr. With the one pick? With that one pick. That, now, I feel you on that, but that is a very tough call. To get a wide receiver, take a wide receiver that high, to take a wide receiver that high, but he worth it. Think he's, about what he's, he's com- elite, and think about what he would be coming here, coming to Chicago too. We would, we already got DJ Moore over there. Mm-hmm. He's a dog. Cole Komet is is trending into being one of the top tight ends in the league, and then we put him on the other side, and then Darnell Mooney in the slot. Nah, bro, they can run it up. Oh, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is wide You got to build. You got to build. <clears throat> you time. have to and build. you'll get a couple steals, too. You have to build. You got to build it. But, but do you trade one down then? Because I you're would, gonna look, I would I would, trade, you probably have to trade one down I to would get trade assets. That, that first pick, I would trade that down to get, an additional, to get an additional pick, additional first-round pick for the next year, and then the first round and the second rounder this year. And then they can still get Marvin Harrison Jr., get an offensive lineman, and you'll have two picks in the second round. Like, bro, they you literally could, this team literally could be, I mean, here's the thing. The Bears, they like three and eight right now, but they've been in every game but one. Yeah. yeah. They've had an opportunity to win They can easily be 500. But they easily need to work they, for the Bears. You tapped in. Yeah, you, you yeah. damn near need to. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm just telling <laughs> you. Because tapped in. Yeah. Just me, there learning over here like. No, but just me looking like at the, you know, just, just looking at the situation. I just wouldn't reset that clock back yeah. and get another quarterback. Yeah, we haven't been known to develop quarterbacks anyway. Too sure. Now, I ask you this. 
say, quote unquote, you trade Justin Fields and you get two picks. What if you could possibly get Caleb and Marvin Harrison in the same draft? That's well, we're gonna, not going to get two that's, picks that's, for Justin Fields. Nah. Two first round picks? <laughs> no. DJ playing Madden. Yeah. 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 We playing. Yeah. No, no, we're not, we, I, I think you could probably get a first and a third. <laughs> no. Well, I'm going to tell you though. right now, we can, for Justin Fields right now, what a team would be willing to give us is, you got to think about it, he didn't miss 10 games over the last two seasons. So, you know, it's some injury concerns because he's running and, and stuff like that. But we could probably get like maybe, maybe like a a, a low second, second yeah. third, third round, round pick. pick. I agree with you from a reasonable standpoint, but do not underestimate how dumbass GRs are, GRMs are in the NFL because we've seen some backup, like some sad-ass quarterbacks go for crazy. Name one. Shit, look at the Carson Wentz trade. You got to think, though, Carson, when Carson Wentz got traded, he was in the MVP conversations, like, the year before that. But he was ass. No, he wasn't. When they traded him, yeah. and then think about no, who they, they traded him to. They struck when it was hot. They struck when they it was struck hot. They struck when it was hot, too, but I'm saying Nick Foles won that Super Bowl. Yeah, but he was, yeah, was balling before he, he got was hurt. Pro- before Carson Wentz, the reason why they got him there. Yeah. He got him to the playoffs. <laughs> McCown was saying, saying I saw pocket. that shit. That team was good, and that defense was legendary. <laughs> they was just fine with fucking Nick Foles. Yeah, but, but I ain't gonna argue that. I'm just saying, yeah. it's dumbass GMs that would definitely. But I'm just, that was, I feel like Carson Wentz was a different situation, yeah. though. Like, they had, they did that. Like, there was a lot of picks. You, know, you gotta think about it. The Jets, they traded away a first rounder for Aaron Rodgers. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't care if Aaron Rodgers was 52. You gotta do it for the money, regardless. You got, you, you make that. He's you selling that the, out. If, if, if you feel like the rest of the team is shored up, your defense is good, yeah. you got all the pieces on offense, and you just missing a guy that, that that can really sling it, then yeah, That's you crazy. trade around a first yeah, round pick. Pause. But <laughs> yeah, my bad. But if you, <laughs> it ain't worse than extend though. But if you, nah, I used to but if you, <laughs> but if you, if you, if you looking at it in Justin Fields' situation, like a team trading for him, it, it's not gonna be a train. It, it's not gonna be a team that's gonna trade for him. That's like one that's a, just a quarterback away. That's the fucked up part, because he will be that missing piece that could take a team over the hump. Yeah, he can help a lot of teams right now. He he, would, Geno Smith is doing good in Seattle, but he'll take Seattle to a whole nother level. Oh, so, you put if you put him on another team that's competent and getting what he needs around him, Justin Fields could be a top five quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, and he, he'll take the Cowboys to the Super Bowl. Uh, I will welcome that because I hate Dakota. Yeah. Nah, Cowboys ain't going to Super Bowl. Not in our lifetime. Nah, Jerry Jones ain't doing it right. Not in our lifetime. I want to hear that 49ers shit from you today. Nah, I want to hear that shit from you. You mind saying? Yeah. Reluctantly. Man, they done figured that boy out, though. Yeah, they did. They done figured. I knew it was a matter of time. But that's that's the same thing I was saying about CJ. Yeah. You see Brock Purdy was on a run. Yeah, they got us. But they done figured it out now. So that's what CJ... We'll be looking at next year, like now if they don't get him weapons out of pocket. Because the crazy thing is, Brock Purdy had the best offensive fucking skill players you could have. You got Debo and CMC, bro. Yeah, you he can't was a seven round that. draft pick. Yeah, yeah. So was. at some point, oh yeah, he was going. If, when it became his job, yeah, it was going to get ugly. Trade and trade Lance, just they shouldn't have did that. Oh, like you said, people NFL people talk about how highly Justin Fields, and NFL people talk very lowly of Trey Lance. I felt like. Here's the thing: we just didn't get a chance to see Trey Lance. We did, did not. But, but that, the little bit that we that we did see, it was like Justin Fields. It was some flashes there, like like he had the potential. I mean, he gonna get a chance in Dallas though. I can't wait. No, I can't don't wait. think he ever gonna get a chance. They love Dakota, bro. Oh, after this year, bro, we gonna we're gonna be good, and we're gonna go to the playoffs and lose in the second round to a team because that's what we do. And then you think y'all gonna go to the second round? Yeah, we'll win the first round. NFC is not as crazy as people think because that um, the NFC South the is trash. Round. Hey, can, motherfucker fans be delusional and they it's just levels of the delusion. Yeah. We can exactly. beat the fucking it's, Panthers. It's Super Bowl. We can beat Panthers the, is not going to I'm saying I'm, I'm going every team in that division. The delusional. Panthers, the Buccaneers, the Saints, we can beat everyone. <laughs> they delusional. <laughs> that nigga, that nigga had a premeditated. Hey. That's what we do. We won't play our game, we lose. That's how I go. They delusional, bro. Yeah, bro. I, I hey, bro. Not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. I'll take it out. Uh, what you got going next, man? What you promo for the people, man? Uh, well, I might as well go ahead and say this: the We Them Ones Comedy Tour, y'all, is coming to Indianapolis yes, February the seventh, I believe, and we're gonna be over there with them Indiana Pacers players, Gaines Bridge. Yes, yeah. so it's going down in there, y'all. It'll be me, Mike Epps, y'all own Mike Epps, the legendary alumni. Mike Epps. Yeah. Um, 
DC on Fly Chico Bean and Carlos Miller. Shout out to 85 South, the homies. D Ray Davis, Lil Duval. So get y'all tickets for that. This is my first like big theater arena comedy tour that I'm on. And it's a, you know, it's a it's a big package. And just to be recognized <laughs> as uh one of them ones at this point in my career is 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 definitely dope. So that um I just shot my first season of Wild Now. I got five more seasons to do with them. Congratulations. With the striking stuff sure, going on, bro. we don't know when that we don't know right now when that's coming though. So yeah, it's so. done and ready. I'm ready for them to drop it, but we got that going on. I got a couple movies for to come out. Um and yeah, like yeah, it's a lot. You a part a of lot. some of them wild style battles? Oh boy, let me tell you something, man. You ain't I, gotta can't, dig look, in. I can't I can't rap, right? I'm gonna tell y'all this. So the Wild and Out thing was like the most stressful job I ever had in my life. For real? Yeah. Because of what we had to do. I can't go into details right. about what, like how, you know, how the show run or whatever. Right, right. But it, I'll tell y'all this, I had got sick. I got a real bad sinus infection, but like I, they thought I was gonna die. I was so sick out there. And uh, I, they had gave me some medicine. I started feeling better. I'm in the hallway. One of the producers was like, hey, now this is, in my mind, I've been killing. Like all the funny games, I've been killing. Like the crowd been loving, like I've been killing. And they say, they come to me, they was like, hey, you. And I'm like, I'm like, what's up? Get on the elevator. You need to start rapping. I'm like, shit, <laughs> y'all ain't bring me here for that. They like, man, we need you to start rapping. I went upstairs, I ate an edible, and uh, <laughs> oh, damn. I started writing, y'all. Just writing funny little raps. And then I called my security and I called my assistant and I'm starting running these reps bound. And they was like, man, you gonna say that? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, they was like, all right, let me know how it goes. The next day I went on there, y'all, man, I'm 10, hit me and holler. All y'all will see, I was going at all they ass. Can't wait. Yeah, and Nick, and Nick texted me. Um, Nick texted me at the end of the season. He was like, I could tell when you first got there, you were still like getting your feet wet. He said, but that second week, he was like, You, you was on some superstar shit. So no, that's hard. It's bro. gonna be dope. It, that's it, fine, it, man. It's gonna sure. be dope. And honestly, man, shout out to Wild and Out, dog. Wild and Out been on TV a long time. Shout out it. to Nick Cannon. Shout bro. out to Nick Cannon, man. I, Nick Cannon does not get the respect that he deserves for how many people our color that he has Absolutely. put in position to to become, you know, mega stars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He done he didn't he done sent off a lot of people. And not just black whites too. He done sent off a lot of people. Yeah. Foreigners. From that show. And yeah. like you said, it's genuine and he giving people a platform. And on top of giving a platform, he giving an opportunity. And on top of opportunity, he's giving you a sound. Like that shit is commendable because he's doing shit within our culture. He ain't not going to get these random ass. He's tapping into the people that's a part of our Listen culture. Listen to me. Nick Cannon reached out to me himself. Uh, that's fire. And all the message said was, Are you ready, King? I said, yeah, what you need me to, what you need, what you need to go? <laughs> and after that, he just let me know, like, you know, what the process was going to be like. He was like, but yeah, we, we'd love to have you. And, it, and I mean, even we was doing the workshops. They had you go through these workshops. And they cut people in the workshops. And, you know, you know, we in there and, you know, he put me to the side like, are hey, you good? You know what I'm saying? Just be you. We already know you funny. You know what I'm saying? Just be That's funny. Smart. Be funny within the games. And I wasn't understanding that at first. Like, I was so focused on making sure that I was playing the games right. Then I had to go back and watch, man, DC Young Fly don't be doing nothing that the games is supposed to be doing. It Hell just no. be, it just, you know what I'm saying? So, but he's funny within the games. Mm -hmm. And once I figured that out, that's when it was like, okay, just go have fun. And then it's crazy. You ever been doing something and at first it's kind of like got you stressed out, but then like right when you got to the end, you're like, damn, I just started having fun. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. how it had got for me out there. So, yeah, no, nah, but shout out to Nick though. Nick has really like, you know, I can't think of, I only did one season, I can't thank him enough just for the love and, and, and you know, and just humbleness and just everything, like, and just him, himself. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I used to always be like, man, I don't, I don't wanna do wildin' out. And I think it's because I was afraid that I would fail. Mm. But I used to use that as a, you know, when people, man, I don't wanna do that, you know, I, Too cool. I, that ain't my, you know, I used to try to play it, but it was because I was, I was afraid that I would fail. Mm. And, I said, man, the only way I'm ever doing that is Nick will have to come hit me himself. And then Nick hit me himself. <laughs> yeah. And then Sorry. it was like, I can't, now I gotta go. Because that's all I've been saying. Yeah. Now I gotta go. Nick, if somebody told you I said that, let me know. <laughs> 
Because it came from out of nowhere. It was like Nick and Dirk hit me, like, in the same week. Damn. It's supposed to happen, bro. Destiny, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, but look, we proud of you, Mojo. We appreciate you, man. We celebrating you, man. Keep going. You know, we saluting you right here. Like, share, subscribe. All that good shit. Club 520 Podcast.